Robert Morris's accuser says he abused her starting when she was 12 years old, between 1982 and 1987. In the past, Morris has admitted to an extramarital relationship with, quote, a young lady. But today, the Board of Elders at Gateway Church said they weren't aware that the young lady in question may have been as young as 12 years old. Morris's accusers say she brought up her allegations more than once to Gateway Church leaders. This is Cindy Clemisher at 12 years old on the left side of your screen, next to her sister, who's 15. Fox 4 doesn't typically name alleged sex assault victims, but Clemisher wants people to see the photo and know her identity because she says this is what she looked like when Pastor Robert Morris allegedly started sexually abusing her in 1982. Probably by now you have already heard that Robert Morris, who is the pastor of Gateway Church, which is quote-unquote the largest church in the U.S., that he has resigned due to very serious allegations of sexual abuse against him. There is so much to his case than most people really know. By the time I'm making this recording, Justin Peters a day ago interviewed Steve LeBlanc, who is a former friend and employee of Robert Morris, and they took an hour or so to discuss Morris's recent resignation and his experiences, his first-hand experiences and insights revealing the troubling aspects of Morris's behavior and the church's response over the years. So I am just giving an overview of this interview and the key points may be what other people need to know, but I would also advise you that you can take some time and watch the full interview. Thank you. Uh, Cindy Clemishire uh, came forward a few days ago, June, I believe, it, I believe this made news on June the 14th, so just a few days ago. As right. it, yeah. yeah, we're recording this on the afternoon of June 18th. So um, um, tell me, you, you texted me when this broke. Tell me, tell me what were your thoughts when you saw this and just take it away, brother. Well, yeah, my thoughts were a mix of horror disappointment and rage. So, you know, I've loved Robert all these years. That's a true statement. I work, I went to work for Gateway um, what, 13 years ago and worked there for three years uh -huh. and began looking to leave almost immediately. Uh, we, it was our, we were in our first six months there when he had Glenn Beck get on the platform during weekend services and give a Mormon testimony of a Mormon baptism so it's very difficult. Um, you're in a, cer a certain ecosystem of churches, and you don't you don't really know what's out there, and and where would you go? And yeah, and and so my resignation came down to conscience. I knew there was immorality at Gateway. I called it. I I brought it to leadership. There was one of the leaders that were um, having sex with uh, women. He was a single man, but he was seducing women and he was on staff. He was not a pastor, but he was he had a lead security position and he could leverage that. And yeah. so I left there with a broken heart. I was under promotion in my position and financially and just couldn't do it. So we decided we would do whatever we had to do. We yeah. knew he had had an affair. This was not a secret. Right. Because he I mean, he had been he had been open. Uh, he had yeah. been open about his past sexual immorality saying that he was um i watched a video of him from about 10 years ago saying that he um he, he was admitting that he when he was much younger used to in his words even i think as a paraphrase but he would he knew how to recognize girls who didn't have a a strong father in the home or a loving father and he's you know he somehow learned to recognize uh girls like that and so he would pursue them that's what makes it so disarming right because a man who's confessing what he used to do like that, you tend to say, okay. And, and even at Shady Grove, I knew he had been removed from ministry and that James Robinson brought him to Shady Grove church and basically dropped him off on the doorstep with Olin Griffin for him to go through some kind of restoration. So what you naturally assume is they've researched this thing. They know what they're doing. It never entered my mind that it, that he had uh, that he was a in fact a pedophile. Yeah. This man held my son as an infant when he was dedicated at Shady Grove Church. 
when he did it, it was not inappropriate. You 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 stole her. Yeah. And yeah, you did this... it for four and a half years. Right. And so the timeline, the timeline here is interesting. And I know the media is getting it wrong. So let me horse's mouth it for you. Yeah. Um, because yeah. the way it works is Robert uh molested her for the very first time on on christmas day of 1982 he was 21 she was 12. okay christmas day now christmas day is at the end of the year obviously right this went on for four and a half years so if you go from 1982 we'll call that the end of the year christmas day if you go half a year you get to robert's birthday which would have been him turning 22. okay and that would have been 1983. Right. Now, if you add four years to 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, it would be the summer of 1987 when Robert would be removed from ministry. Cindy was 16. Okay. Yeah. She's yeah. 16 when it ends, actually close to 17. Yeah. And and what I'm saying is he was molesting a child for four and a half years. And after that ended, in only three years, he's an elder. Right. And I and, and, and so what I'm saying I, now, I now know he's resigned. He uh -huh. resigned from Gateway Church. Yeah, we learned that. Uh, that just... statement never says he repented. Right. Because he has not repented. Right. When you repent, you don't try to obfuscate. You don't try to hide. You don't you don't give titles like you did to me about her. He said she was flirtatious. She had a Jezebel spirit. She was a seductress. And he told me that the, the girl he had, the young lady he had been involved in, threatened him. That the reason why he had to he had to keep doing it was because she threatened him. Now I never knew how long it went on. He said it wasn't a one-time thing. But that she threatened him, saying if you that if he were to stop, she would tell, she would tell, she'd turn him in, or whatever, just she'd tell on him. So he he made himself a victim in that. That he's not repentant of that. That that is incomprehensible to me. I, I mean, I don't want people to miss that. So, and then in his, um, in, in Robert Morris's explanation of his uh, inappropriate sexual behavior, he actually says that he blames it on a Jezebel spirit. Yeah. There were many from, such statements. Yeah. That, that she, again, she was flirtatious, flirtatious, manipulative. Um, there were a few Jezebel, um, that was the common mantra was that he had been victimized, that, that he had stumbled. Yeah. Okay. Oops. And he was the victim. And, but then now he that there was this sin trap with this wicked woman. He falls into it and like a Venus flytrap, she shuts over on him because he's so irresistible and good looking or so, I guess. And and she just has to have him and she's drawn to the anointing. And 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 therefore he's he's trapped. I know Olin. James Robinson knew. I know they knew. Okay. And Olin was a former uh, state trooper. He knew the law. Um, I cannot imagine he did anything without his right hand, Monty Smith, knowing. And yeah. I know for a fact James Robinson knew because they are the ones that met with the family. They met with Cindy. They met with her parents. They actually knew. And they did not report this crime to the proper authorities, which is the police department. These are not things that need to happen inside of a church. And let me tell you this. Debbie knew it, too. Debbie, his wife. Debbie, his wife, who later called the child, who was, I believe, 17 at the time. And Debbie told Cindy, who was 17 at the time, I, quote, I forgive you. That's unconscionable. The only reason I'm not acting more surprised is because you told me about this before we started recording. So I right, right. But I that is incomprehensible that that she told the victim, Cindy Clemishire, I forgive you, as right. if she did anything wrong. But keep in mind, and I've told you this, Justin, on other occasions, and I'll say it to it, I'll say it to the world right now. Uh, Robert is a master communicator. In case you didn't know, yeah. um, he's the best communicator I've ever heard. Yeah, uh, he can be very winsome, affable, right? Uh, and he is 
he is a master manipulator. Right. And to think that he would have had a problem manipulating the wife who loves him, I, I think that's exactly what happened. I think he manipulated her. And 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 I I I'm not saying that's enough. That's not okay. That's not an excuse. Right. That's still what's at play. She's complicit though. And and right. so is again what I said is James Robinson and Owen right. Griffin. And Owen Griffin, by the way, is still a quote uh, apostolic elder at uh, Gateway Church, even after Robert has resigned. Absolutely. I don't believe that's a real church. I don't believe it's a no. real eldership. No. I'm happy to say that publicly. Uh, their doctrine is false. Right. Uh, it's prosperity, and their new mythology right. is completely charismatic and wackadoodle. They endorse and uh, import every single kook out there. Yep. Todd um, White included. Oh, yeah. Todd White is the low hanging fruit. Yeah. Bill Johnson. Bill Johnson. That's Joel right. Osteen. Yeah. Kenneth Copeland. Any of those people. Yeah. And every female, including Joyce Meyer, Beth Moore, you name it. Right. You can't throw a stick without hitting a heretic in that place. Right. Um, right. But I think, yeah. I think true sheep can be deceived. They can. And as sad as that is, but I believe the Holy Spirit has opened their eyes, and I think they can yeah. see it clearly. His life and his doctrine. He's not just disqualified. Um, he's a criminal. He is. Yeah, he's a criminal. This is not your run of the mill. Um, you know, quote unquote, moral failing that we hear so often. This, no. this, this is rape of a child. I know of one instance that I read about of a woman, and this was she went to, I don't remember the year, but she went, she had concerns. Um, it was around the 2005 when Cindy did approach Robert saying, I want help with therapy. Now, by the way, when she did that, um, Robert talked to me about it. And he said she came and she was trying to blackmail him for $2 million. That is, in fact, what he told me. Okay, so okay, so I want to say this. So Cindy Clemenshire, the victim here, uh, said that she wanted help from financial help from Robert Morris for her, for her therapy. For her therapy. I believe she asked for $50,000. That's I'm what misquoting the article. Misquoting Cindy. Cindy, if you listen to this, I'm very sorry. But I, that's just to my recollection. And I, I'm I'm pretty yeah. certain. And they offered her twenty five thousand, right? You know, because Gateway doesn't have hundreds of millions of dollars, oh. right? And and uh, but she had to sign a non disclosure agreement. And to her credit, and 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 honestly, to the credit of women who maybe will hear of this story, who and and pastors and and wolves that will hear of this story, and maybe it will give them pause to not touch another another daughter. Yeah. She she refused it. Wow. She refused the twenty five thousand dollars. Yeah. Wow. And and I was going to tell you this around that time, uh, that's when Robert decided to come out and talk about it publicly. All he was doing was damage. He was trying to head her off oh. where she couldn't bring anything. I'm, t- so I'm that, telling you, that it's, is you're saying that it was about that time that Robert started talking uh, about his, you know, previous. That's correct. Um, and this is something else, Steve, it just crossed my mind. You told me this before we started recording, uh, going back to the timeline here, you know, this did not happen before Robert Morris claims he got saved. So this, oh, that's a great point. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. You want me I'll yep, speak to yep. that. So there's a famous message that every Shady Grover will remember. And, and probably every gateway person will remember. And it's called Jake's Motel Room 12. Okay. It's a, it's a masterpiece as far as the sermon goes. Now, not exegetically, don't get me wrong, but it's a masterpiece <laughs> right. of communication of humor. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a dumpster fire of theology. Right. But Robert was a traveling evangelist, 17 and 18 years old, who claims that uh, he was in what he called a no star motel, Jake's motel. He's in room 12. He, he tells the story. He did a series on it at gateway. And he told this story and, and it is in fact a story. It's a lie. He's in Jake's motel room 12. When he finally gets saved that he was 19 years old when he did that. Now 
that's one story. Now, here's another message that he used to preach, and it was basically, when is the change? When did the change happen? That was the emphasis of the whole message. And his message was this, you know you got saved when the change in your life happens. Now, that has a ring of truth. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. Because he said, I knew I got saved in Jake's Motel Room 12 because my life changed. That's when everything changed. Okay. Well, two years later is when he began to molest a 12-year-old girl as a married man with a son and 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 molesting her in his friend's house, a pastor right. friend's house, who he's there to preach for. So was it one time? No. It was ongoing, headlong, unrepentant for four and a half years. He did not quit. He got caught. Right. She told, and he got called out. Right. I, and you, you using that term just now, kind of jog my thinking, Steve, uh, resignation. When you read this, statement from gateway church that they just put up as of this recording a couple of hours ago um they said we accepted i don't have it from me verified we accept robert morris's resignation yeah. and i when i read that i'm thinking why wasn't he fired why was he not terminated exactly uh, well i mean these are the men who've been under the false teaching and who have been under the manipulation and bottom line, they, you know, here's the irony. And many of those men I could call out by name who claim to have prophetic gifts. They claim they can yes. hear directly from God and they get immediate revelation. Yes. Yes. God just didn't. Right. But where is yeah. your spiritual gift in this? You didn't exactly. know you were a pedophile? Exactly. Well, all these people. Odd. Yeah, isn't it, though? That's very you know, odd. All these people, Kenneth Copeland, Todd White, Creflo yeah. Dollar, Jesse Duplantis, James Robison, uh, Joyce Meyer, Heidi Baker, Bill Johnson, you know, Joseph Prince, on and on and on and on. And, you know, I hate, um, I was, Mike, even Michael Brown, you know, Absolutely Michael Brown. Absolutely Michael and, Brown. Michael and, Brown is the one that, well, mm, yeah, yeah, no, it's all other, but Michael and and uh, all of these, all of these big name charismatics and Sam Storms, and, you know, and I'm not saying Sam Storms is complicit in it, but I, 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 these all, all of these people claim that God speaks to them, God gives them words of knowledge. Well, Sam, Michael Brown, Michael Brown, and My, Michael Brown and Sam Storms, I wasn't weren't they sitting in front of you? Defending Mike Bickle, telling you what yes. a great guy he was. Look, Sam Storm said, I know Mike Bickle to his core. Mike Bickle is probably my best friend in this world. I I was in a small group with him and his wife for seven years on his staff as his senior associate, involved at IHOP for an additional four years, 11 years. I know this man to the depths of his soul. I can't think of a more biblically orthodox, humble, Christ exalting individual. You know, well, he, he? yeah. He's saying his praises, you know. I mean, it, 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 to listen to Sam Storms talking about Mike Bickle, it, it, Mike Bickle was, you know, just a, a hair short of the second coming. I mean, right. So they have no, they have no prophetic use of praise, nor do they have any discernment. Right, right. Okay. So got it. And Sam Storm said, if you're not seeking out these charismatic gifts, you know, uh, uh, prophesying and words of knowledge, if you're not seeking that out, you're you're sinning, he says. And um That's right. and yet he was close personal friends with Mike Bickle, mm -hmm. served with him for years, nay, decades in ministry, knows him to his core, and yet God and claims that God speaks to him. Why yep. did God not give him a heads up about his close best friend, ministry partner, Mike Bickle, who was a sexual predator? Right. Because it's not true. Yeah. It's, it's just not true. Yeah. No. It's, it's, it's fictional. And, and, uh, yeah, God what does, what, he, he spoke it, he breathed it out. He wrote it down in his word and the Holy spirit ministers that word. Right. But the immediate revelation, yeah. the insights, no. What good is it if God gives you a word of knowledge about somebody's bum 
toe out there in your audience and God does not bother to give you a word of knowledge about your personal friend in ministry, one of the biggest names in the charismatic movement, who is also, oh, by the way, a sexual predator. Yeah. Please. It, yeah, it could have been helpful. It seems like Jesus would be a whole lot more concerned with the purity of his church, which he is building. And he and yes. he wants his church. He made his church the way he wants it. He wants his church the way he made it. Yeah. And when you read the book of Acts, those games were not being played. And when they were, in some cases, obviously, they were corrected severely. Yeah. Yeah, um, that's right. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the cross. Thank God for mercy. Thank God for grace. Amen. Yeah. Amen. But, but we can't we can't lower the standard from what the Bible holds up. That's and right. unfortunately, that's that's been the pain in this in this woman's life. Um, yep. Cindy. Right. Uh, having to watch that. And our prayers for her, uh, complete restoration and healing. Although seeing her talk, I feel like the Lord's done a lot. And I, I would just tell you this on behalf of the elders at, at, at Sherman Bible, she's welcome with us for anything she needs. Uh, counseling, any kind of help like that. Uh, very safe place uh, for that. And so yeah, I would say that for her. Um, and I know there's probably there's other churches too. So praise God that there there is the body of Christ. I don't know how well she could trust though. I would assume that that's beyond difficult, you know. Yeah. 